sometimes what motivates us, what motivates us to want to walk a life of obedience? Because to God, our obedience is everything. Matter of fact, he teaches us in his word that when we stand before him, you are not going to be judged for what you know. You can have a head full of theology, full of scriptures. You're not going to get judged for that. You're going to get judged for what you did with what you know. Hi, my name is Angel Falcon and I'm honored to be uh, before you here today. We believe that there's no greater responsibility entrusted to us as believers uh, to give you, teach you the Word of God. I trust that you will be richly blessed by what you're about to hear. Remember that as we increase in the knowledge of God's Word, His blessings are sure to fall upon us. Trust you will be blessed. I want to start this, this morning's sermon with a question. And I want you to respond to that question. So just raise your hands so that I can hear it. And the question is, what is it that motivates us? I want you to make it personal. What is it that motivates me? to keep living a life of obedience. Keep living a life, you know, that pleases God. What is it? What is that motivating factor in our lives? Because it could be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And so, what would yours be? What keeps you, your motivating factor in is, is loving God. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, Mary. Walk in love. Okay, the same. Next. Fidel. Huh? I can't hear. His word. Mm -hmm. His goodness. Yvette. Salvation. Salvation. Your redemptor. The plan of redemption. Shaniko. Be an example of obedience. See how that now that's interesting because now he's saying, not only do I want to be obedient, I know it's right to be obedient, but I also want to reflect my obedience to those in my home, my family. To be pleasing to God. Yes. <laughs> She read, this, this is interesting because that was one of my things. She said, because I read the back of the book. <laughs> you know what she meant by that? I want to be obedient because I don't want to end up in hell. That's what she said. Some people may say, you know, and see, some people won't say that right now because we're among people. But some people come to church simply because mommy and daddy drags them to church. So they have a sense that I have to because of mom and dad. But as soon as I'm out the house, I'm going to do my own thing. Some people, some people's motive to try and be obedient is, yes, judgment. And some people... Listen carefully. Some people will want to do the right thing out of fear. In other, in other words, your motivation is fear. And it's not the fear of, of reverencing God, right? 
it's a, I mean, you, you, you were scared. True story. I remember my, my aunt, she was um, the oldest of my mom's sisters and brothers, right, or siblings. And I remember she, she did something to me and I just, it upset me. I was maybe about six or seven years old. It upset me so much that I stuck my tongue out at her. And she told my mother. And my mother gave me such a guilt trip. She came to me, she said, I don't believe, go to your room. I don't believe you did that. God is so upset at you. Oh my goodness. And I just like, uh, you know, horrible. So bad that when I finally did my, my confirmation, the first, guess what the first thing I told the, the priest? <laughs> You know, I went through the thing and I says, I, I stuck my tongue out of my, at my aunt. That was the worst thing I could remember. And he says, is that it? <laughs> no problem. Go to do this, you know, these prayers, you know, three times and you're good. And I, what a load. I'm good. I'm good. So sometimes what motivates us what motivates us to want to walk a life of obedience? Because to God, our obedience is everything. Matter of fact, he teaches us in his word that when we stand before him, you are not going to be judged for what you know. You can have a head full of theology, full of scriptures. You're not going to get judged for that. You're going to get judged for what you did with what you know. Amen. Some of us, now, just, I love you, man, but sometimes love, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some tough love right now. Ah. Uh, But some of us know more than what we're walking in. A true believer, a true God-fearing person seeks to honor God by obeying Him. It is, it is, I have to show God my love and commitment to him to obey. Now, I don't want you to get all crazy on me because how many times sometimes we've blown it. Sometimes our temper gets the best of us. Sometimes we're not as patient as we should be. Sometimes somebody just says the wrong things. And how many of you all know that you have buttons? You have buttons that you still need to be delivered from. <laughs> <laughs> but God has called his children to a place of willful obedience. Now, <laughs> yeah. at my son Gabriel, he just loves playing games and watching videos. And I, as, a, as, a, as parents, we want to make sure that we watch over him and make sure that he's, you know, uh, doing in the right web, you know, Wi-Fi games and stuff like that. You know, we, we, we have to guard that because you don't know what's going on. And I find it real strange when he's playing games with videos and adults are playing, you know, these games. And I'm saying, I don't want you to play Gideon. If you want to play a game, you can play a game that's innocent, you know, and good, but don't play that. So I made it real clear to him. I caught him one time. I snuck up on him and there he was. Now, he knew I told him no. So when I said, what are you doing? He, he had one of those moments where his head turned completely around. <laughs> you know? You know, he knew. I said, what are you doing? Are you watching a video that I told you not to watch? 
And all he could say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, that's nice, that's nice. But like, this is like the third time I've caught you. It's going to be really difficult for me to believe you. And so I got him in trouble, you know, and, and sure enough, the other day, you know, he, you know, I took away the, the iPad for a little bit and then, you know, he goes to the softer side of the parental <laughs> guidance and, uh, you know, she, then she gives me her puppy eyes and I say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes she's tougher than I am too, so let's just flip that up. But um, you know, the, then he does it again. So he knows to do the right thing, but he's so enticed by that that video, and you know that it draws him. He really wants to please me. And, and the thing that really broke my heart, you know, because I was angry and I said, you know, you, you know, I'm fighting my best not to tan his hide, you know. You know, I'm trying to, you know, because you got, you know, sometimes you get angry, right? And you want to execute judgment. But then, you know, you got to let him, the, the best thing to do is try to get them to understand what they're doing and how it makes you feel. I think that goes further, right? So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, daddy, I'm sorry. I said, okay, son, all right. But give me the iPad and give me the tablet too. So, sometimes it's the same thing with us. Though we know that there's some things that God doesn't, it doesn't like. We're, we're enticed. We're, we're drawn to it. And our obedience, our need to obey, is the evidence that you're living a life to please God. See? See, pleasing God has to be more important to you than pleasing yourself. Looking to honor God's word has to be very real. I've been around long enough to know that just because people are in church doesn't mean that they're walking in obedience. You're just walking in obedience today. But I don't know what your obedience is going to look like when you leave that door. I don't know what happens to some guys when they take their ties off. Their church clothes. And so I want to read to you some scripture verse that will further establish this fact that we are, our lives, as believers, we ought to live a life that's obedient. I'm not, I'm not, I want to be obedient. I don't want to be obedient when it's convenient for me. I want to be obedient all the time. If I'm doing business, I want to do obedient. I want to be obedient. You know, if I'm, you know, uh, dealing with my taxes. Oh, how appropriate is that? <laughs> I, I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to fudge numbers. So I want you to turn with me. If you, if you don't have a Bible, we have some extra ones and our ushers will be glad to give you one. First Peter chapter one. The Apostle Peter admonishes us. And I want to begin reading at verse 13. It says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Now, you know, the loins is your core. That's that, your strength, you know. Um, but in your mind, it says you need to gird up your minds. And be sober, sober. And rest your hope fully upon the grace of that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now here's when it starts to get real interesting. As, verse 14, as obedient children, 
not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, not the way you used to act like before, right? But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Be holy in the way you carry yourself. Be holy in how you treat others. Be holy in doing business. Be holy in your jobs, beloved. Be holy. Be holy in how you, you, you treat your spouses. That means don't get carnal. Don't get, don't get, you know, insulting. Don't get, don't, you know, because sometimes you know that life and death are in the power of your tongue. And sometimes you, you can't tell me you're holy and you're tearing up your brother or sister. God has called us to be obedient. Matter of fact, in, in, um, in Samuel, I, you don't need to turn there, but we find a story where, where the prophet Samuel rebukes the king of Israel. His name is Saul. Now Saul was the first king of Israel. Now, I want, I want you to really understand this. They insisted on having a king. And there's a lot of different things concerning this. But I want to draw your attention to this one fact. The only reason why God picked Saul was a, because of his humility. He was a humble guy. He loved God. He was small in his sight. That's what the Bible says. But then he kept... God kept telling him to do things and he did the opposite. And there was some reason. I mean, he, he wanted, he wanted, what he wanted to do was really make himself look bigger and better and, and help cause the people to perceive that God is with him, that God ordained what he was doing. You follow me? So there was a sense of manipulation. But, but I'm telling you, um, um, the rebuke was hard. God dealt with him on several occasions. And it got to the point where God says this in 1 Samuel 15, verses 22 to 23. It says this, Has God, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? That was a question that was imposed by the prophet to Saul. The king, he was the king. What he said was law. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. So he thought the sacrificial lambs and all this other stuff, all of that he did, that that was more important than anything else. No. No, because we can get, you know what that implied? He was, he was acting religiously, doing what religion was requiring of him, but in his heart, he wasn't obedient. How obedient are you when no one's looking? Because that will reveal the substance of your character. We would get highly insulted if we were ever called a hypocrite. You know, a hypocrite is someone who isn't what they project themselves to be. But the fact of the matter is, if you do one thing, you act one way when you're around certain people, then act a totally different way when you're, when you're with other people, another type of group of people, what is that called? What is that called? Yeah. So this is what he says. He goes, listen. He says, to obey is better than just the motions. It's more important than just the motions. The appearance. He says, to obey is better than sacrifice. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, God compares witchcraft to rebellion. Rebellion is when you know to do the right thing and choose not to. Oh, 
God has called us to live a life of submission. Now, here's, here's some beautiful things concerning obedience. Obedience is simply to be able to understand. See, hearing has a lot to do with obedience because you got to hear first in order to obey. Right? What it is, when, you know, Scripture tells us this, and you don't need to turn there, but it tells us, he says that we have a responsibility in the sight of God to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 10 5. We're to bring every thought. So part, it, it, part of what we need to do if we're going to walk in obedience, right, is we've got to be careful as to our thought life. Because we're not going to disobey until it becomes a thought. The thought comes in and then action follows, right? So we got to be careful what we're thinking. And so we need to render it, we have to capture those thoughts and make sure they're subject to what God tells us to do. Obedience in its original intent in the Old Testament, it means simply to hear and obey. In the New Testament, it says to listen in a state of submission. To obey, you, you, we cannot obey something we don't trust. So if God said it and we trust God, then we'll obey. Are you hearing me? And so... I love that because it, you know, if, if we're going to be obedient, that means that we're attentive to what God is saying. And I guess, see, I, I guess that's why the enemy is so committed to make sure that he distracts you from reading the word of God. Because once you read and you understand and you know what's right to do and don't, to you it is sin. How important is obedience to you? How important is it to you to want to please God with your everyday decisions? The disciples in, in the book of Acts chapter 5, you know, they, they, they sought to do the right thing. And, and the religious leaders were so upset at them that they imprisoned them, beat them up, and then release them and says, don't preach on that, on the name of Jesus anymore. And they said to them, hold up. Is it more important for me to obey you or obey God? Guess what we're going to do? What a conviction, right? And so what do we do? And that's my point here this morning. What do we do with what we know? Once we read the word of God, once we find out how he would love for us to, how he would love for us to conduct ourselves. How do we carry ourselves? Because I tell you, sometimes we can be really cruel. But the Bible says, if you love him, you'll keep his word. If you love him, you live a life that's submitted to his wisdom and counsel. Staying away from, from the old life, from the old attitudes, from the old convictions, right? Um, um, but looking to honor God and how I conduct myself and how I carry myself. It affects everything. It affects how I treat my co-workers. It affects how I treat my boss, even though sometimes I think he is unfair. And, and you know, and, and sometimes I really want to. I don't know how many of you then, and I haven't been in the workforce for a long time, but I remember, you know, just really, just, I just, and, and just wanted God, I was looking for God to give me permission to insult him. You laughing at me, but I'm sure some of you all crossed that line at some time. God, I know, I know, I know that you said to turn the other cheek, but you have not called me to be a, 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 a you know, a welcome mat. 
How committed are you? How committed are you to walk in obedience? Because if you're obedient, it'll be evident. It'll be evident. You know what's so heartbreaking? That the scriptures teaches us that there will come a day when we will all stand before God. Good and bad. Black or white or whatever color you are. We are all going to stand before God and give an account for our own lives. And the Bible says that there's going to be many who says, Lord, Lord. And God says, huh? I never knew you. They had a religious experience. They were going to church. They were teaching Sunday school. And God says, I never knew you. What did they have? What did they have? They had a religious experience, but they're not, they were not walking in obedience to God. They didn't know God. Amen. And the sad thing, the sad thing is that some of us are there. I would love to think that all of you, every single one of you are, are you know, but the odds are... <laughs> How important is it for you to obey? How important is you to carry yourself holy? How important is it for you to keep yourself? How important is it for you to keep control of your temperance? How about self-control? There's so much mis I can't even say it. Promiscuousness. There you go. Said it wrong, but you know what I, exactly what I meant. <laughs> but if you're going to carry yourself, who are you looking to please? Yourself or God right now? When no one's looking, who are you looking to please? God or man? And as God-fearing people, we need to wake up every day with that conviction in us that I'm going to live to please God. I want to live a life that's pleasing to God. I'm going to love those people that are hard to love. <laughs> Here's another scripture verse. That we find in James. It's found in chapter 1. I want to read, begin reading at verse 21. It says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word. We need to receive the word of God, which is able to save your soul. So we have to receive that word. He says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only. Beloved, can I confess to you, you don't know how many times, you know, I, I, you know, by the grace of God, I've been, I've been a believer for over 42 years now, pastoring for 25 years, and I remember sharing, you know, the, 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 the gospel message and the importance of holiness and separation, and you, you, you would think, I mean, I pound that in the head, you would think that people would get it and then all of a sudden they find themselves in a in a problem and and the problem is based simply because they didn't seek to obey God in some area do you know you can obey God in one area and and be rebellious in another area And, and, and sometimes, you know, our disobedience will, will, will be self-evident. Because, beloved, listen very carefully. Our actions will reveal to us our convictions. Our action will reveal to us what we really value and love. And so I challenge you here today... That you, you know, as you, as you, 
every day of your life that you look to really look to honor God with how you carry yourself. He says, you know, God's called us to be separated from the world. But some of us, we look more like the world than anything. When God says, you know, when, that you are separated, what does that imply? Though we're in the earth, we're not of the earth. That's what the Bible says. And so you, you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, even though there's evil all around you, you still ought to represent God. Obedience. Are we obedient? Do we thrive for that? Verse 22 tells us, again, I'm in James 1, 22. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving, deceiving yourself failing to see you know I can understand people deceiving other people but when you find yourself deceiving yourself you are one sorrowful case that means you got to convince yourself of something that's true to be eh, maybe God didn't really mean that deceived wasn't that what got us all into trouble in the Garden of Eden? He knew to do right. God instructed him to do right. And he chose to do wrong. For some reason, the devil deceived him to thinking that really God's holding out on you. So don't, don't deceive yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, then he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Now we've all done that this morning. We all looked at a mirror. I can tell because you ain't looking crazy. Hair's somewhat in place. Nowadays you can't even tell because messy is the thing. <laughs> But we all looked in the mirror. But he's saying, he's saying that, that, you see, I lost my place here. In verse 20, 24, he says, For he who observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. We ought not to get up in the morning and forget who we are. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus says, Jesus himself. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He learned to obey by the challenges of life. He learned to obey by the temptations of life. Jesus. And we're learning each and every day to obey. I'm going to do I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm going to forgive, I'm going to apply mercy, even though I may not be getting it back. But I'm going to do the right thing. The right thing to do is love our fellow man. I'm going to do that. The right thing to do, listen, sometimes we struggle because people aren't doing what they need to do. Whoever, you don't see that in the Bible. Wait till people do what they have to do and then love them. You don't see that in the Bible. You do, you do the right thing for you. I got to do the right thing for me because when I stand before God, God is not, I'm not, I can't say, uh, listen, the wife you gave me, she's the one, she was the trouble. That's no, no, yeah, no. My wife is going, no, that's not. Bad analogy. <laughs> You're not going to go to God and say, well, you know, my kids, it's my kids' fault. They caused me to lose my mind. No. It's you. You're, you're going to be responsible for you. You do what's right. Don't wait for other people to get there. 
a matter of fact, you be the inspiration. Remember what Shaniko mentioned earlier? I want to be obedient, not only because it's right to do, because I want my kids to learn that if you do the right thing, God blesses. When you do the right thing, God honors. God blesses. There's a scripture verse that I've been really meditating for some time. And there's so much treasure in this scripture verse that it just amazes me. But Jesus taught this lesson about stewardship. It's about how you manage your life. It's about how we manage our time, our, the things we do, and how we manage not only finances, but, but in dealings with, with relationships and everything. And he says something that to me is like, oh my goodness, it's, it's profound. Jesus teaches us about the importance of faithfulness and stewardship. And if we're going to be faithful, then we have to be obedient, right? If we have to be faithful, then we got to look to live a life that, that seeks to please God by how we conduct ourselves. I mean, that's just, just common sense. But he says this in Luke 16, 10. It says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in the much. See, what he's saying is that you need to prove to God that you can be faithful in the little things so that the much can come. Everybody's trying to get the much, but God says if you deal with the, li <coughs> the little things, the little things, some of us, see, we think we're going to get God's blessing simply because we're just doing one element of it. No, no. I realize that I want to honor God with everything. I want <coughs> I, to, I learned that to me, God requires me to die to self that he may live. Then he goes on, he said, listen, if you can't, look, you know what, I want to read it fully so that you can really capture the, 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 the heart of this scripture verse. Again, Luke. Luke 16, verse 10, it says, For he who is faithful, he who is trustworthy, in what is least, what is least, is faithful also in the much. If you can't be faithful in the little right now, when the much come, you ain't going to be faithful. Some of you saying, oh, when, when things get better. No, no. If you ain't doing it now, you ain't going to do it then. And he who is unjust in what is the least will be unjust also in the much. Then he starts, these next couple of verses are really deep, and I'm just going to, I can't expound too much on it, but it is rich. It says this, therefore, if you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon or possessions, here's, look at what Jesus said, if you're not faithful in what you have, who will commit to your trust the true riches? See, God is looking on how you handle what you got right now. God is looking on how obedient are you right now. Are you only, you know, some of us are selective obedient. We select specifically, well, yeah, I'm going to obey that, but that one, I, not yet. God is still working in me. I'm going to obey that. Somebody talk to me. No, you got to be faithful. If God says something, do it. Stop reasoning in your mind why you don't do it. <clears throat> then he goes on to say, who's going to entrust to you the true riches? Now the true riches is heaven. And all that it brings. And if you cannot be faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? You got to be, you got to prove that you are faithful in what belongs to another man. Oh, I feel like, but I, I ran out of time. Are you faithful? It's 
So God's looking at, as I, in closing thoughts, God is looking at how we carry ourselves and how obedient a life are we living. And what motivates us? What motivates us to obey? Scripture is clear that if we love God, we will obey God. If we love God, we will seek to do the right thing. If we love God, we'll hold on to Him no matter what. If we love God. In Revelation chapter 22 and 14, it says, Blessed are those who do His commandments. Now remember, remember the last, remember my sister here read the end of the book. She read the end of the book. This is probably three verses before the end. Revelation 22, 14. He says, Blessed are those who do, who do, who do his commandment, that they may have the right. See, obedience gives you the right to be sons of God. Gives you the right to the tree of life. That you may enter through the gates of this celestial city. <laughs> but whoever keeps the word truly the love of God is perfected in him and by this we know that we are in him 1 John 2 5 so I submit to you how committed are you to obeying God And living a life of obedience. Conducting your everyday life. All your interactions. Does it line up with how God would like for me to act? Now there's going to be challenges. Just like Jesus was challenged. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. And so you're going to be challenged. And, then, and in that challenge and in that heat of the moment. When all of your emotions are kicking. Am I going to do what's right? Am I going to honor God by obeying His word and keeping myself pure before Him? Some of us have been coming here year after year. Some of us for decades, some of us for a quarter of a century. Some of us maybe not that long. Some of, up, some of us grew up here in our teenage years and kind of went into a wilderness experience and God got you back. Because the, the seed of God's word was sown in your heart. But the most important thing is what, what are you doing with what you know? That's what I want you to leave here today. What are you doing with what you know God's word is saying? For me personally, although I'm very active in ministry, the one thing that's more important than anything is to make sure that how I carry my life before God is right. And I know the value of self-control in levels that... But honoring Him, I must. Obeying Him, even if it hurts. Even if it causes me a promotion, happen to me. I got to honor him before anything. So the question that I want to echo in your hearts is, what, what's your motivating, what keeps you motivated? What? What motivates you to living a life of obedience? Because it's really vital to the end result.
Because you can have an outward form of religion without the fruit of it. But God has called us to be fruitful. Just bow your heads. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you.